right before we took the break, I asked you uh, if you told the uh, interviewers, police or whoever, uh, in June that you thought you paid cash. Yes. And uh, you didn't remember, right? No. If I showed you a copy of your transcript, ask you again to read what you need to but this will be what I'm asking you about the police in June of 20, June 23rd of 2022 that you thought you paid cash. Yes. And that would make sense because Adam was doing little things to try and collect cash, right? Yes. And you certainly had no money in the bank on your card, no. right? Right. So... Uh, after this panic that you say that Adam feels, um, goes up to the drive-thru, right? Yes. And um, the jury was at the Burger King, and you sort of make a roundabout way into uh, the drive-thru, right? Yes. And it's wide open there, right? Yes. And people are coming in and out of Burger King, right? Yes. And you stop at one place to make the order. Yes. And you ordered uh, croissants and hash browns. Yes. And uh, this was for you and the kids. Yes. And then you pull around, turn, and go to uh, where you actually have communication with a live person. Yes. And the first thing that uh, you do before you get your food or anything like that is turn over, uh, but Adam is doing it because he's in the driver's seat, right? Right. Turning over the cash. Yes. Might have been card, but probably not, right? Right. You know, do you have a specific recollection now of whether it was cash? No. Okay. So assuming cash, but card would be the same, you turn it over to the clerk, right? Yes. And then the clerk uh, does what the clerk does with money. Yes. And then uh, opens the window again and maybe counts out the change. Yes. And Adam would be there with his hand out and change being counted out into his hand, right? Yes. And then maybe that change is handed to you so that he can then reach in again for... Um, the food yes and when the food comes in he probably takes the bag and gives it to you yes and uh, you said that just before that the um, Adam was scared because he had been striking harmony and something different happened yes and uh, while he's striking harmony the children are screaming yes going in through the Burger King parking lot. Yes. Going through the Burger King order spot. Yes. And going through the Burger King drive through Yes. And you did not do anything, as you said, uh, with Harmony. Right. 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 She was just laying there in the back. Yes. And uh, right there as he drives up to the clerk at the Burger King parking lot. Yes. Okay. And you said Harmony is moaning in the back seat? Yes. And uh, I don't think you said it, but you were... Was it a moan that you understood to be a dying child? No. Okay. What was the moan? I don't know. She was making a noise. Okay. 
and you didn't um, check on her, right? No. Didn't throw a cover on her. No. Didn't um, have to turn around and soothe the boys in the back seat to make them quiet. No, they weren't always crying just because one other kid was crying. They weren't always crying. But violence, chaos, yelling, and screaming would make them cry. They didn't, they weren't really, they never really cried that much. Okay. Okay. Um, did you ask to run in and maybe get some extra napkins to clean up the urine on the seat? No. Um, with that smell lingering so bad, did you think maybe to ask if Harmony could go in and clean up? No. Did you do anything to deal with the smell of urine? No, because Adam said she could just lay in it. Okay. All right. And he was upset with the smell? Yes. Okay. All right. And I think, actually, um, you say that the kids may not have been crying. I think that, did you tell the police that you thought the kids were sleeping? Yeah, they didn't really make any noise. Okay. Kayla, that assault never happened, did it? Yes, it did. Okay. Well, you describe physically trying to stop him, yes. Adam. You describe verbally trying to stop him. Yes. Right? Uh, nobody wants a person to strike and hurt a child. Right. Especially a five-year-old child under your care. Right. And you cannot allow that to happen. You can't sit by and allow that to happen, right? Right. Okay. But you said that you stopped trying to do anything because he looked at you with the face of pure evil. Yes. Uh, so you just got scared and shut up, right? Yes. Because his face was pure evil. Right? Yes. And pure evil, a person with pure evil is not someone you want to protect. No. And a f person who is pure evil is not someone that you love. Well, that's hard to say. Okay. A person of pure evil is not someone you want raising your children. Right. Okay. And you would do anything to get your kids away from pure evil. Yes. And uh, even though Harmony was your child, you felt the same about her. Yes. Uh, she was pretty much your child. Yes, I helped take care of her. Okay. And when you and Adam split up years later, or March of 2021, you wanted him back. We were both trying to fix our family and get back. You wanted him back with the family and raising the children. Right. And um, when uh, you were sitting in your cell thinking about this and reliving it, and you wrote that note about your thoughts about what you wanted, you indicated that the children needed Adam as well as you, right? Right. And that's not the face of pure evil. Right? No. Okay. So, You said to the jury Friday, I believe, that you fed the children at the Burger King parking lot? Yes. 
Okay. We were leaving the parking lot. As you were leaving the parking lot, you were feeding them? Yeah, I handed them food. Okay, who did you hand food? I handed Seamus some food. Uh-huh. I handed Declan some food. Uh-huh. And I put, I reached behind my seat and was giving Harmony the food, but I just put it down, thinking that she was going to be grabbing it. Okay. So, um, do you remember telling the police that you fed the children at the Colonial parking lot? No. Okay. Did you feed the children at the Colonial parking lot? I don't know. Okay. Um, now, your car died at the intersection uh, late morning-ish. Does that sound right? Yes. And you were at the clinic at 7-ish? Yes. Okay, so you were in the Colonial parking lot for a while, right? Yes. All right. And uh, you don't recall talking to the police about feeding your children in the back seat at the Colonial? No. All right. Um, first of all, we we'll, before I ask some more questions, set up the situation. Declan is in the car seat by the uh, behind the driver. No. You've got Seamus there now. Yes. And uh, so you're having Declan in the middle seat. Yes. And Harmony is on. Uh, the passenger side behind you. Yes. And Declan is under a year. Yes. And you got croissants. What were you feeding Declan? Pieces of food. Okay. So you would break off a little piece of hash brown? Yeah, something. I don't remember what I was feeding him. And would you hand it to him and make sure he grabbed it? No. You just sort of put it back there? I put it in his mouth. Uh, so you would turn around from the driver's side and put little pieces of food in Declan's mouth? No. What? I reached my arm back and put it in his mouth because he's in the middle. Okay. And Seamus. Okay, so would you turn to reach your arm back and look and make sure you're getting it in his mouth? I could feel it. So you reach back with your arm and you feel around for his mouth and put it in? Yes. Okay. And then Seamus, you also have to give him small pieces of food, right? Right. And with Seamus, you break off a small thing and you give him and make sure he takes it in his hand, right? Right. And so you turn around and reach over to Seamus and hand him his um, piece of food. I didn't turn around. Because I could see him. Okay. I just handed it to him like that. He was sitting in the car seat. Okay. Right. All right. Uh, do you remember describing to the police? Oh, oh, and also you said that you took some and you handed it back to Harmony? I gave a sandwich to her, yes. You gave a croissant to her? Yes. So you bought the croissant for Harmony or for you? There was three of them. Okay. There was one for her, and then there was one for Adam, and one for me, and the one that I had, I broke apart and gave to the kids. Okay. And, uh, so what'd you do? Put the whole sandwich back there for Harmony? Yes. Did you check and see if she was eating it? No. Why not? Because I didn't. Okay. Okay. And um, Harmony's position while you're doing that, I think uh, she's leaning against her brother beside her? Yes. And then sometimes she's leaning up against the door, I think? Yes. And uh, 
You don't check on her? No. Don't check and see if she's eating? No. But you make sure that you've put the food in Declan's mouth? <laughs> yeah, because they're younger. So you weren't concerned about Harmony at that point? That's not what I'm saying. Okay. You feed them directly because they were younger. You don't feed Harmony directly because, or make sure that she's eating why? Because she can open the package and eat it. Did you hear her open the package? No, I don't know. I don't remember. Okay. And so after that, you went up to Bodero's to get some drugs. We went to Colonial Village. Sustained. Okay. So when you went to Bodero's to get some drugs. Overruled. Council approach. <clears throat> So after you ate, uh, you got some drugs. I don't remember doing that. Uh, you remember approach, having a council approach? Rephrase the question. And after you ate, uh, you and Adam uh, did some drugs. Yes. And uh, you did not ask Bodero to call 911? No. You did not ask your friend Bodero to come out to the car to maybe uh, help you while you checked on Harmony? No. You did not ask to take Harmony up to Badero's apartment to maybe clean her up and make sure she was okay? No. Okay. And uh, fair to say today you don't know where you got those drugs from? We were always at Colonial Village where he lived and he's the one that we got drugs off of. Okay. And... Uh,
But you do recall actually feeding all three children in the back seat, right? Yes. And you recall that you were um, feeding them, and do you recall that you said that you were um, feeding them with one hand because your other hand was in the bag for your food? No. Okay. So let's talk about why you left the colonial. Um, at that point where eventually the car broke down, okay? Um, did you have concerns about harmony in the car at the time that you left? No. Did you look at harmony at all? in the car before you left? No. And you said that he, Adam, struck her God knows how many times? Yes. And that she had been crying and that Adam actually got scared that he had hurt her? Yes. And you never checked? No. And uh, you described on direct when you were talking to the um, state that whenever you all were out in public, uh, Harmony would be covered up so no one would see. Right. That wasn't quite true, right? Not in the beginning. Okay. And um, not at Burger King. Yes, she was under the blanket in Burger King. Okay. Do you recall saying that she had a blanket on her lap? No. When you were feeding her? I just knew the blanket was there. And that you put little uh, pieces of food on her um, blanket that was on her lap to feed her? No. I don't remember putting pieces of food on her lap. Just sort of toss back a sandwich? Yeah. Okay. And you had no concerns about Harmony? No. She, you said that she was moaning before she was uh, at Burger King? Yeah. And you said that she was moaning after Burger King? Yes. And that moaning had you concerned? Yes. But you didn't check? No. And I think you just said because you weren't concerned. No, I am concerned. I was concerned. Okay. And you didn't check on her? No. And um, Adam, you described as being scared that he would hurt her, had hurt her. Yes. And where did you go from, where were you going from the village? I don't remember where we were going. I don't remember if we were going to figure out how to get money to get more drugs. I don't remember what we were doing. Okay. I don't remember why we left. Okay. So that uh, if this were true, then Adam would be driving around with a critically injured child in the back seat in public. Right. And it would have been a pretty important place to have to go for him to take that sort of risk of driving around with a critically injured child in the back seat. He didn't care. Okay. And you did or did not? I felt like I had no say. Okay. Anytime I said something, I'd get yelled at. Okay. And then, uh, you say that at the intersection, by the way, what drugs did you do that day? I remember doing heroin or fentanyl. Okay. Not crack. I don't remember if we did that or not. Okay. So when you said on direct that it was uh, 
heroin and crack. That's not what you recall. I don't remember doing both or not. But you do recall heroin and fentanyl? Yes. Okay. And... So uh, we discussed timing with the Colonial at 7 and then um, the breakdown late morning, right? Yes. So you were at the Colonial for a few hours. We are at the clinic at 7. And then Burger King and then the Colonial. Yes. And so you were at the Colonial parking lot for a few hours or a couple of hours before you left for wherever it was you were going. I don't think we were there that long. Do you recall breaking, well, the tow truck driver, do you recall going back to the intersection and the tow truck driver was there? You're talking about after the car broke down? Uh-huh. Yes, I remember when we got brought back. Okay. And that was like after 1230 or so, right? Yeah, something like that. And how long did it take you to walk to uh, Mr. Badero's from the car? I don't know. It felt like a long walk. I don't remember how long. Okay. Okay. Uh... So, uh, let's see. In that time that you were in the Colonial parking area on the 6th prior to the car breaking down, Harmony was in the car, but she was dead, right? No. This is... Yes. Sorry, Harmony was on the seventh between your seven o'clock. Uh, session at the clinic, dosage at the clinic, to Burger King, to the parking lot, to using drugs, to late morning driving away. Yes. Harmony was dead in the car, right? Not throughout that whole time. Pardon? Not throughout the whole time. She was actually in the trunk of the car, right? What? Were you and Adam planning or trying to figure out what you could do with Harmony because she had died? No, that didn't happen yet. Okay, okay. So, uh... Didn't even make any sense. Somewhere important, you had to go with Harmony in the car. And, uh... You break down at the intersection, right? The car I didn't does. have anywhere important to go. Okay. So, at the intersection, there's Webster and Elm Street, right? Yes. Elm Street is a big road, four lane. 
Yes. Four lane in the sense that it has turning lanes, right? Yes. And Webster is smaller, two lane. Well, it was just, it was still two lanes where we were. Yeah, yeah. and then it changes. Um, and so you were on Webster getting ready to get onto Elm Street. Uh, I don't remember which way we were going. But I knew we were at the light, at the light, first car at the light. So you don't know if you were in the four-lane part or the two-lane part of Elm Street or the two-lane part of Webster? We were right on Webster at the light. Okay. And um, the light turns green and the car doesn't go. Right. And uh, there are cars around you. Yes. Honking. Yes. Looking at you. No, they were just figuring out why the car was there. They were, we had to keep telling them to drive around. Okay, so you and um, Adam are sort of waving them around? Yes. Or you're waving them around? I was waving them around to go around the car. Okay, and uh, Adam, I think you said, got the duffel bag out of the trunk? Yes. Because the duffel bag was in the trunk, right? Yes. But Harmony's body was in that duffel bag already. No. Overruled. You tell Adam, well, I think, Adam asked you what to do, right? Yes. This is a pretty bad situation, right? Right. With Harmony in the car like she was? Yes. And Adam asks you what to do. Right. And you tell him that you should... Oh, just, yes. So you tell Adam that sustained. <laughs> well, approach if you want to approach. And at that intersection, um, 
you all uh, pack up and go to Badero's, right? Right. And that was your idea? No. It wasn't? No. Um, I'm going to refer you to... Uh, I'm going to approach first, Your Honor. I'm going to show you a copy of the transcript of your June 3rd interview. I'm going to move this clip a bit because it might be hidden by it. And ask you again to review a portion of it. And I'm going to ask you a question. And that is the area. Page 50 for the record. You told Adam that you should go to Badero's, right? I asked him if we should. Okay. So it was your idea. Right? Yeah. Okay. And you gathered... Adam grabbed a duffel bag from the trunk. Yes. Uh, you got your purse and stuff from the trunk? No, my purse was not in the trunk. Okay. So you got your purse and you got some stuff from the trunk. <coughs> Is that correct? Yes. Okay. You uh, got some diapers for the kids? Yes. And you couldn't take too much with you because you were walking with all the kids to Mr. Badero's. Right. And you can't wait around for any kind of help because you have to get Harmony's body away from that car as soon as you can. Yeah. Okay. Now, I want to talk to you about discovering that Harmony was dead. I think on direct you said that Adam opened the door and said something like, uh, baby girl, wake up, or wake up, baby girl. Yes. And uh, she wasn't moving. Right. And that's when... Uh, he popped open the trunk, you said. The trunk wouldn't open. It did eventually, though, right? He went, we moved the car seat out of the car so that he could move the seat to get into the trunk. Okay. And um, Adam checked her breathing? He was just trying to wake her, and she wouldn't wake up. Okay. Do you remember Adam saying that Adam put a, uh, his hand over her heart? No. And uh, so that didn't happen? You don't have a recollection of Adam putting his hand over her heart? No, I don't. 
Okay. But you did tell the police that in June of 23rd that he put his hand over her heart to check her. He was checking her, but she wasn't waking up. Okay. So he did put his hand over her heart to check her. He tried waking her up. I don't remember the hand on the heart. Okay. Do you remember telling the police on June of 2023 that he checked her breathing and like put his hand on her heart? No. Okay, I'm gonna show you. Copy of that same transcript, okay? And ask you to review uh, that paragraph there, okay? I still don't remember that, but I can see that I said that, but I don't remember it happening. Okay. But what you told the police back in June of 2023, you were telling them as if it was a memory, right? Right. So either it wasn't a memory or that memory is gone. I don't remember. And you also checked Harmony, and she wasn't breathing. Right. Uh, you checked her neck, and you checked her wrists. Yeah. And you were looking for a pulse. Yeah. Must have been panicking. Yeah. Uh, did you do that before or after you were waving cars around? After. Okay. So... Uh, after you have checked harmony, you're saying that you went to the back of the car and you're sort of moving, uh, waving cars around to get them around your car. Yeah. Okay. And how long did you do that? Until we got the stuff out of the car that we needed to get out. Okay, so are you doing that while Adam is getting stuff out of the car? No, we're both on other each side of the car doing the same thing, trying to get stuff out. Which side of the car were you on? I don't remember. Okay. And you claim that uh, as these cars are going around and beeping and everything, that Adam put Harmony into a duffel bag. Yes. And um, the four of you walked to Colonial Village. Right. Now, on direct, you said that you never saw Harmony bleed. Yeah, I didn't. Okay. Did you ever see blood on her? Not that I remember. Okay. And uh, you, you told the police that while Adam was throwing stuff in the back and cleaning the car, that, uh, well, you told the police that Adam was putting stuff in the bag and cleaning the car, right? After. After what? After we got to Anthony's and he brought us back to the car to get stuff out. Uh-huh. And he cleaned it. Okay. 
Uh, and you said that he cleaned the back seat because he had blood on his hands from hitting Harmony. I don't remember. Yes? You were asked what Adam was cleaning, and you said that uh, the back seat because he had blood on his hands from hitting Harmony, right? I don't remember that day of him doing that. I just remember cleaning the car after. Okay. Um, I'm going to ask you the questions, and then we'll do some more. Um, you said that uh, Harmony had a bloody nose, and he had blood on his hands from hitting her, and he was wiping the seat with a napkin, right? Overruled. I don't remember it that day that she passed away that that was happening. Okay. And um, you were asked if Badero said anything about Adam's bloody hand, right? Not that day. Okay, I'll go through. Um, and you said no, he had already cleaned up his hands because that event, the bloody nose thing, happened days before, right? Right. And uh, you were asked more about whether Harmony had blood on her, fa on her that day. Right. And you said you saw dried blood on her face, right? Right. And you said that uh, that was the day the car broke down, that you saw dried blood on her face. Right. Okay. So um, I'm going to go through the transcript and ask about some of those other things that you didn't remember and see if it refreshes your recollection. Okay. Sure. Approach. show you. Again, it's that transcript from June 23rd. And ask you to review portions of that transcript. And I'm going to show you 229 uh, down to all of 229 and 230.
Thanks, man. That help refresh your recollection? Yeah. And So, uh, you did tell the police that uh, Harmony had a bloody nose and had blood on it. He had blood on his hands and was wiping the seat with a napkin. Yeah, but that happened days before. That happened before she died. Sure, but the wiping was on uh, the uh, when the tow truck driver was there. Yeah, when we went back to the car. Okay. I remember cleaning. Okay. And it was for the blood that was on the car? I don't remember what it was for. Adam just wanted to clean it. Okay. But you recalled that uh, you did see blood, you said, on Harmony's face. Yeah. Right? And it was that day, right? Yes. And where you saw Adam cleaning was around the area that Harmony was sitting, right? Right. And you said that Adam had blood on his face that day? I mean, on his fist that day? Yeah, on his hand. And that Harmony had blood on her face? Dried blood, yeah. Right. But not from days before. Are you saying she had dried blood from days before? Yeah, she had dry blood on her face. From days before? Yeah. And he never cleaned her face for days? No, he just kept her under the blanket. Now, you said yesterday, uh, Friday, that uh, you and Adam had talked about what to do together. Is that right? Do you remember that? Yes. And that you sort of came together with the plan to say that Adam had taken Harmony to her mother's. That's what Adam told me to say, yes. Okay. I am going to switch over now to when you go to fit, okay? Which time? With Adam, Declan, and Seamus. Okay. And the body of Harmony. Okay. And so uh, Adam no longer had a car after December 7th, right? Right. And uh, he no longer had the freedom to drive wherever he went, wanted to, right? Right. And uh, when he drove, there would be somebody else in the car, right? He would be driving someone else's car, right? right? And uh, sometimes he drove Badero's car, right? That was way before. Okay. Um, and you still didn't have any money, right? Right. And uh, from two days in Badero's car, uh, you go to your mother's. Right. And I think... You actually go to an aunt's or something and uh, 
from there, your mother comes over and gets you off. Yes. And uh, you could only stay for a very limited time. Yes. She might get in trouble with her landlord. Yes. And so you were trying to get into the shelter. Yes. And you worked and applied and everything like that for the shelter. Yes. Would you walk over there to do that? Yes, we did. Okay. So you, Adam, and the kids would walk over to the shelter to apply for uh, shelter there? We walked to city welfare. Okay. And um, would you, Adam, and the kids be in the office all together making the application? Um, when we filled out the application, yes. Okay. And then I saw the case manager. I don't remember if we were together or if it was just me. Okay. Uh, now, when you, um, you told the jury that it fit, you had taken the duffel bag from the ceiling. I didn't realize I had said it. Adam took the duffel bag down from the ceiling, right? Yes. And Adam was the one that put the duffel bag in the ceiling in the first place, right? Yes. And um, you said that he took the duffel bag down from the ceiling and had it in the shower for hours. Had it in the bathroom, yes. Oh, was there a shower there? Yes. And did he have it in the shower for hours? I don't remember. Okay. Okay. And um, from the bathroom, where did it go? To the closet. In what? Trash bag. Okay. And then what? CMC bag. Okay. So it went from the bathroom into a trash bag, one of those big black things? Yes. And from there, it goes into the closet. For how long? I don't know, a day or two. Okay. And there, the trash bag and Harmony's body is goes in the CMC bag? Yes. Okay. And... I think you identified uh, Exhibit 85 as pretty much a duplicate of the bag that you got when you from CMC right yes and this is a bag that's given when you give birth at CMC right yes and it's for diapers and carrying things around with for your children right yes diaper bag pardon diaper bag okay and uh, from the CMC bag with the trash bag and Harmony's body. Yes. Where does it go? To Portland Pie. Okay. And then where? To Union Street. How? In a tote. Okay.
Where did it, from where to where did it go to Union Street? Where did it get in the tote? From the shelter. So how did it, the CMC bag get back to the shelter? It came back from Adam's work. Okay. To the shelter. Who brought it back? Adam. Okay, who brought it to uh, Portland Pie? I did. Okay. So, um, are you saying that it's in the CMC, in, there's a body in a trash bag in the CMC bag in the tote? Not in the tote at the time. When you go to Union? When we go to Union, yes. Okay. And, um, So you told Okay. So you take the tote you take the CMC bag but not the tote. To Portland Pie, not the plastic, right? I'm confused. So am I. I'll back <laughs> up. Sorry. To reorient ourselves, uh, at some point, you say that Adam takes the body down from the ceiling tiles. Yes. And it's because there's a smell. Yes. And it's because other people in FIT are concerned about the smell. Yes. And uh, you all are concerned that somebody might be checking the place to find out about the smell. Yes. Because you've heard the complaints. Yes. And you're scared. Yes. And I think you said uh, Adam takes the... At Harmony's body down into the bathroom. Yes. And puts her, takes it, her body out of the duffel bag. Yes. And puts her body in a trash bag. Yes. And puts the trash bag in the closet. In the CMC bag in the closet. Okay. So from the bathroom, is her body put in the CMC bag? in the trash bag, the trash bags in the CMC bag. And that all happens in the bathroom? Yes. And then, um, you uh, said, I believe on direct, that Adam ta tells you to take uh, the CMC bag to Portland Pie. Yes. Tell me about that. He had asked me to bring her body in the CMC bag to his work at Portland Pie. When? Uh, while we were at the shelter. Uh, was it uh, right after you say that he put the body in the CMC bag? Yes. So like the next day? I don't remember when it, if it was the next day or a couple of days. Okay. And um, where was he when he did this? Was he in the shelter with you saying, bring this body to, to me? Yes. So he's in the shelter with you and at some point goes to work? Yes. And has told you to bring this CMC bag to work? Yes. Why didn't he just take the CMC bag? I don't know. Okay. So you have... Um, Two kids and a stroller, right? Yes. And so tell me about those arrangements, getting the seat, and, and you take the seat, all of that to Portland Pie. Yes. Tell me about how you did that. Um, it was a double stroller. So I had one kid in the front, and there's a basket underneath, and I put the CMC bag in the basket, and then the other kid was on the other side, on the other seat. 
Okay. So you take the CMC bag out of the closet and put it on the stroller? Yes. And is that inside fit or outside fit that you loaded on the stroller? Inside. And then uh, you get your kids arranged yes. as well inside? Yes. And then you walk down uh, the street, and I think you said it took about 15 minutes or so? Yes. And you are walking with your children and the body of Harmony in a CMC bag to Portland Pie. Yes. And uh, why? Why was it going there? Did you know? They asked me to do it. Okay. And you didn't say anything, ask him why or anything? He said he was doing it so that the smell wouldn't be at the shelter. Okay. Um, did, did you tell him he should take it with him? No, he called me when he was at work and told me to bring it. Okay. So he didn't tell you to do that while he was at FIT. He, he was said, thinking about it, but I, wasn't, I didn't think he was really going to do that. Okay. So he mentioned it at FIT, but then calls you from Portland Pie and says, come on down. Yes. Okay. And um, then you have a place at Union Street, right? Yes. And um, somehow the body has returned to fit? Yes. Before you moved to Union Street? Yes. And you don't know how? Adam brought it back. Did you see him bring it back? I don't remember. Okay. Um, I don't remember if it came back. Yeah, because we had to bring it to the apartment. Okay, and you brought it? Uh, the CMC bag in a plastic storage container, right? Yes. And um, you went to the Union Avenue apartment, and again, you have a stroller with your two children, two sons. Yes. And now it is a plastic container that is on the stroller. Yes. Okay. And it was in a plastic container on the stroller when you went to Portland Pie? No. Okay. And when you got to Portland Pie, um, you and Adam, or Adam, put the body in a refrigerator? It was his job. Okay. So he did. That was his job, it was his to handle? His job was at Portland Pie. Okay. So he took the CMC bag inside, and he said he put it in the freezer. I'm sorry, I was, I meant to be asking about Union Street, and I know that I misstate sometimes. So at Union Street, um, you're on a second floor? Yes. And uh, you sign the lease and everything like that, and um, Adam brings the body upstairs? Yes. And uh, the CMC bag is put in the refrigerator? It's in the tote. Okay. When we, was, when we were walking to the Union Street, the bag was in the tote. He brought the tote upstairs and put it in the closet. Okay, and um, from the closet, it went to the refrigerator? Yes. Okay. Now, earlier, before I was uh, specifically going over your activities at FIT and um, Union and Portland Pie, I had talked to you about a conversation that you had with Detective Dunleavy after the June 3rd interview, right? Yes. And you said that you had gone up to him and uh, said that uh, uh, you had forgotten to tell him during the June 3rd interview that you had taken the diaper bag from the freezer 
and walked with it in the stroller to meet Adam at the back of Portland Pie. Right. That's what you told Detective Dunleavy, right? Right. And that you said the bag was there for one to two weeks, and then it was brought back to the Union Street apartment, right? Right. Okay. A little bit different from what you've just described, right? Right, but I remember bringing it to his job from the shelter. Okay. Counsel, you want to approach? As I said, I, I look for what we consider to be natural breaking points. This sounds like one of them. So we are going to, um, we're going to break for lunch. So I'm going to ask you to come back in an hour. So come back at one o'clock, please.